Experts in Britain have produced a map showing which areas they believe could spark border disputes. Brian Hanrahan reports. Until recently, nobody much cared who owned the Arctic. It was impenetrable to all but the most hardy of explorers on the ice and a handful of nuclear submarines below. But now ships can find passage through the melting ice pack, inspiring dreams of accessing oil and gas fields on the ocean floor. Politicians have been dusting off their atlases. Now they have a new one to study. We specialise in interpreting issues relating to international boundaries and jurisdiction, and we thought that we could produce a map which concisely summarised the current state of, of play, the claims that states make, um, areas of potential dispute, so hopefully it will inform debate and policy development. Now this new map sets out the overlapping claims of the six countries that surround the Arctic Ocean. Each has the unchallenged right to economic control over waters stretching 200 nautical miles out from their coast. There is some overlap. The US and Canada have a boundary dispute. So does Norway and Russia. But there are principles for settling these disputes. Where it gets difficult is out there in the middle. Because what's at stake is an energy jackpot potentially on a Middle Eastern scale. Russia has already claimed exclusive rights over a big swathe of the seabed, but it is being challenged. The new map shows that if the other countries maximise all of their claims, then almost the entire Arctic would be swallowed up. There'd be just two tiny small blue patches of ocean left for open exploration. Incidentally, the North Pole would end up being disputed between Russia and Greenland. But whoever wins these arguments, it'll be like Christmas has come. Last August, the Russians staked their claim by planting a Russian flag on the ocean floor using a deep water submersible. Whatever happens, Russia will get most of the known energy resources here. But the potential rewards make every meter worth fighting for. Right now, we don't have the technology to exploit it. So it's a, a bit of having the cart before the horse to talk about conflict over these resources. Nevertheless, you want to have your claims in before you start exploiting it. And there's going to be negotiating and people will try to make bigger claims than what they will ultimately settle for. There'll be another voice in all this, the conservationists. There's no mechanism to protect the Arctic. Until now, it wasn't needed. But global warming is opening up one of the world's wildernesses to the potential damage caused by oil and gas prospecting. Brian Hanrahan, BBC News. The economy is expanding and the oil industry is expanding, the ship trafficking is uh, growing here and uh, we should be worried about the destiny of these whales if the things go on so that uh, the economy interferes and sometimes uh, destroy the environment. Although it's thought there are around 100,000 beluga whales worldwide, they are listed as a vulnerable species. Their number is already much lower than it's been in the past due to years of overhunting. Rises in sea temperature due to climate change may also be responsible for the drop in population. This group of scientists is now placing underwater cameras in the sea to try and unlock the secrets of the beluga in the hope they can reverse some of the damage. Researchers say they've already discovered amongst the clicks and squeaks a distinct logic. We know beluga whales have an alphabet consisting of 30 sounds and our task is to work out their vocabulary. I see my work as a way to make contact with another highly developed intellect. There is no need to go to Mars or other galaxies for that. These biologists are hoping their work will improve understanding about the beluga whale. They want this unique location in the White Sea declared a heritage site, so the whales will have a permanent sanctuary away from man. Alex Rossi, Sky News, Solovetsky Islands.